I'm uh, Nicholas Lardy, and I'm the author of Sustaining uh, China's Economic Growth After the Global Financial Crisis. I was inspired to write this book because China's premier Wen Jiaobao a few years ago said that China's economic growth was imbalanced and unsustainable. And I wanted to understand what he meant by that and to understand clearly what the policy choices that the leadership faced, you know, what would they have to do in order to continue the great economic success that China has had for the past more than three decades. It turns out there are several imbalances. The most obvious is that household consumption is a relatively small share of the total economy, and investment is a very, very large share. China is investing a larger share of its output than any other economy in the world ever has. So it's really an extreme case of overinvestment. Uh, and the causes are, in part, something we call financial repression, which basically means, in this case, very low interest rates. So the real cost of borrowing on average in the last seven or eight years has been only between one and two percent in real terms. So if you're running a business and you can borrow that cheaply, you want to borrow as much as you can and build up your, uh, your business as fast as possible. So basically capital, I believe, has been underpriced. That has led to overinvestment. Rebalancing is a complicated problem. Uh, it will take some time and in the book, I outline really four areas in which the government needs to change its policy. Perhaps the most important of these is to move much more towards market-oriented interest rates. For the last eight or nine years, households on average have had negative real interest rates on their deposits. Uh, that has brought down the interest rate structure. That has caused households to save more. It's led to overinvestment and the solution is to have more market-oriented interest rates. Uh, and there are some other steps they need to take on financial sector liberalization. The implications of successful rebalancing would mean that China would be able to continue to grow at a relatively high rate, maybe not the double-digit rates of recent years, but something in the 9 to 10 percent range. The risk is if they aren't successful at rebalancing, uh, the growth rate could slow quite a bit, even as low as 5 or 6 percent, and more importantly, it could stay fairly low for a number of years. Uh, so rebalancing would sustain China's economic growth, and the implication for the U.S. is, and the rest of the world, would be highly positive. China has been a major source of the growth of global output in recent years. If it were to slow dramatically, it would be a drag on global growth. Its big contribution would evaporate. So certainly the global economy in the U.S. would be much better off if China can adopt policies that would lead to a sustainable, long-term uh, economic growth, let's say in the 8, maybe even as high as 9 percent per year. I think China's response to the global financial crisis was certainly successful in they managed to keep the headline rate of growth up at a very high rate compared to most of the rest of the world. But they did incur some costs in doing that. Households went a lot more into debt. They invested too much in property. Government debt went up quite substantially. And they overinvested, probably at least to, to some extent, in infrastructure. So this is, you know, now when China's facing a slowdown, their options are a little bit more limited than they were back in 2008, 2009. They can't do a huge stimulus program because government debt is much higher. Households are not likely to pile into real estate the way they did in uh, 2009 and 10 because they're much more indebted. 